So. Hey you guys, welcome back. So as you can tell from my different backdrop today, we did it. We managed to move in Edmonton, Alberta, up here in Canada in February of all months, the worst, the worst month for weather. <laughs> and would you believe it? We managed to move during a polar vortex. So it was like minus 45 degrees at the worst, but we've done it. Most everything survived. I'll get into that, who the casualties were, a couple of the sad ones, what exactly went down, how we did it, how we moved everything. So to start, apologies on having this not all set up. I literally have you balancing on a bunch of things and uh, furniture and everything has just arrived. Still have some art, some other things to come, but we've got it partially done. So I figured it's been so long and I'm just so excited to get back and share what the heck I've been up to with you guys. Okay, so I will start from the beginning. So February 1st, we got possession of this house and we were still in our apartment. And the problem with this house was the walls were painted purple. And in order to agree to buy this house, Andre agreed that we would paint the entire inside of it before moving in. So the first couple of weeks after we moved in were spent painting the entire home. Then, of course, as soon as we finished painting, a polar vortex came in. And this is not uncommon in February where I live. So a polar vortex means that the temperatures just get suddenly insanely cold. And when I say insanely cold, I mean minus 45 degrees Celsius cold, which I believe around minus 40 is where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. So for all of you in the States, very, very, very cold. <laughs> I can't survive outside in that, let alone the plants. So I didn't even try. For those first couple weeks, while that polar vortex was wreaking havoc here in Edmonton, I didn't move a single plant. I didn't even want to try one plant, honestly. Like I was too afraid. I thought even one plant with a heat pack bundled up, I did not trust that. So I, <laughs> I didn't do it at all. Our apartment was not like your standard apartment building. All of our hallways right from the door of the apartment are open air. So you spend quite a while hauling stuff between the door of the apartment and a vehicle parked outside. And I wasn't going to risk it. I was way too afraid to try that. The last thing I wanted to do was try to rush moving some of those plants and then just murder a bunch of them. So I patiently waited. I left all of my plants at the apartment when we moved the furniture. So essentially the apartment was just a greenhouse, <laughs> which actually really suited it. It's just a box with big windows, so it actually suits the space. But I was going back every couple days to go water, tend to the plants, all of that. I also left the greenhouses, of course, because I didn't want those plants outside of the greenhouses for too long. So greenhouses, plants, everything stayed at the apartment. Then after those two weeks, we started beginning to move plants and it's still Canada in the cold. It's not minus 45 anymore, but it's still like, minus 15, minus 20, it's still cold. So one of my neighbors at the apartment gets good food boxes and she told me that she could save some of them to let me use them for moving plants and they could not have worked better. So this is what the boxes look like. They are a fully insulated cardboard box. The lid has a little insulation flap. It was absolutely perfect for moving plants. You could pop in quite a few plants in there. She had saved me like maybe eight or nine of these, something like that. And we did move plants across quite a number of days. So it wasn't the worst thing that we only had a handful of boxes. They work great. If you are moving your plants in a cold climate, I recommend going to Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji, something like that, and seeing if anybody has insulated boxes like this. Coolers work good too, but of course, like each family probably only has one cooler in their household. So having these was phenomenal, worked amazing for hauling everything over here. 
except in two different circumstances, plants that were just too tall for the box, those weren't gonna work. And all of my huge house plants, my birds of paradise, my palms, all of that. They weren't gonna fit in these small boxes, so I had to come up with another way. So what I did is I called up Salisbury Greenhouse. They are a local greenhouse here in Edmonton. It's actually the greenhouse that I used to work at back in like 2010. And they sell plants year round, so they actually have huge rolls of like thick, thick paper that they use to wrap their plants in when they sell them. So I called and I just said, look, I'm moving like 15 massive house plants. Is there any way that I can pay you for some of this paper? Because I just need like a whole bunch of it. And they were so nice. They actually gave me the paper and just asked that I make a donation to MS. Uh, they had like a donation box at the front. They even pre-folded me a bunch of different sized bags. So in order to move those huge house plants, all I did was wrap the bottom of the plant with the soil as tight as possible with a garbage bag because I had to lay them on their sides in the car. And then for the top part, I just tucked everything up as much as I could, like the palms, everything, made them as slim as possible, wrapped that paper around it, rolled it up and taped it around. And I moved those plants on like a minus 10 to minus 15 degrees Celsius day. So it was still cold, but that paper was enough to keep everything okay. So the two palms, my beautiful Bismarck, and my majesty palm do have a little bit of cold damage. Um, actually, so do the birds of paradise, the lower leaves. Just whichever ones were touching the paper seem to have got a little bit of a nip. Not enough to actually burn right through, black out the whole leaf and kill it, but just enough to give me a couple of dark spots. But that's okay, it's battle scars, it shows what we went through together to get here. Now, the casualties of this move. <laughs> so I posted over on Instagram and this was devastating. I had a huge Monstera. It was years old, beautiful, huge, massive fenestrations, an incredible plant. And in those two weeks that I was going back and forth, watering, tending for things, I didn't constantly have eyes on plants. And I was usually coming in the evenings after work. That Monstera got thrips really 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 bad like they are a thrip magnet and luckily it seems like when it got thrips was right near the end everything else for the most part was out i had left that monstera till the very end because of how wide it was monstera deliciosa are just so huge and messy and i knew i would need at least two of those bags wrapped around. like it was going to be a big headache to try and move that thing if i laid it on its side it would break like i needed I don't know, I was just I was trying to do my best for it and leaving it there alone too long without eyeballs on it, the thrips took off. So I did mention I keep beneficial mites almost all the time. Right before the move, I got a bunch, but I use them mostly in the greenhouses. I barely hang any on plants around my apartment. I just find that I don't often get bugs too bad. I have my eyes on things too much. I spray things down too much. Like I don't often get pests on those big plants. And I should have known because Monstera Deliciosa are notorious for getting thrips. And once you've had thrips once, they are a leaf mining pest, meaning they actually get in to the foliage to lay their eggs. So once they're in that leaf, no amount of spray is going to kill it. So it really really it was it was not salvageable so what i actually had to do was make four huge cuttings and spray those cuttings down and get rid of the mother plant i could have tried to save the base of the mother plant if i really fought hard i probably could have tossed the soil cleaned the roots down really cared for it but between everything here I just, it was too much. I couldn't do it. All of the little baby leaves were totally damaged and totally toast. So it was, 
a sad plant to let go, but I have some massive, beautiful cuttings of the best parts that I'm still treating every few days with a spray to make sure that they remain thrip free. And once those root up, I should have a big, beautiful plant once again, or multiple big, beautiful plants. So I've come to terms with it. It needed a haircut anyways, it was getting wild. Now, the final loss, which I don't think I've even come to terms with yet, it's like it's not real. I moved in one of these boxes by itself just to keep it extra safe, all tucked in with paper towels, my beautiful biggest Anthurium clarinervium, and I somehow forgot about it. It was a disaster here. It's still a disaster here, if I'm being honest. Like moving into a house and trying to set that up is a huge process, let alone trying to do some of the rentals that we're doing. And there were just boxes everywhere. I didn't even think. It ended up out in the garage where it's very cold. It wasn't an insulated box, but it was in there for just too long by itself. And by the time I found it, both of the leaves had fallen off and the root system was pretty much toast. So when I was moving plants, I wasn't watering them right before moving them because it's cold and wet soil would be even colder, would conduct the cold, I left them dry. It was so bone dry in there, most of the roots had even shriveled up. I saved the stump of it with a couple good roots and it will bounce back eventually, but that plant was so special to me. It was like the beginning of my plant collection journey. So while I have other clarinarviums, like it's just that one was just so special. So a hard L on that one, but one that I will come to terms with when it bounces back and I feel like super plant mom for saving it instead of neglectful plant mom for leaving it in the garage. And I'm going to end this one here because I'm going to do how we moved the Ikea greenhouses in their own little video. But I have missed you guys so much and I'm so glad that I can finally sit down, turn the camera on and not feel guilty about not continuing <laughs> to finish setting stuff up. But we are nearing the end. Like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel comfortable now just kicking back and having a self-care night or hopping on here to chat with you guys. And Sven really missed everybody. <laughs> so thank you all again so, so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one where we talk about moving the Millsbows. Bye, you guys.